Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I'm very happy to be here today with you because I'm going to train you on a subject that's very close to my heart, something that I'm very passionate about, photography, and more specifically, photography using smartphones. First, a little bit about myself. My name is Kajitan Bareto. I have 15 years experience in teaching photography. I have a Facebook page called Bareto Photography with more than 15,000 followers. When you get time, please check it out. And when you do, don't forget to click the like. My contact details are also available. Today, to make the training effective, we need to understand the team. Because as Aristotle said, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. And we together make up that team. So to get to know the team before we start our session, let's start with three simple questions. Your name, one thing you love, and one thing you hate. Oh my. my name is Omar. I love cars. I hate to travel. Hate to travel. My name is Najwa. I love to dance. I hate liars. <laughs> My name is Muhammad. I love to eat. I hate you. Indeed, I love women and I hate fighting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Prince. Uh, I love eating, as you can see. And what I hate is silence. Hate what? Silence. 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 Oh, two people yeah. who hate silence. Okay. My name is Shibu Alex. I love silence. I hate cockroaches. <laughs> My name is Walter. I love reading. I hate show off. Sure. My name is Murli. I love any activity which is there, but what I hate is sleeping. Interesting. So quite a varied team. And that's what makes a team interesting, because we come from different backgrounds. We have our own strengths and weaknesses. But before we start our session, let's lay down some ground rules. First of all, we will be using smartphones for a change in our session, but please make sure that they are on silent mode. In case of any emergency, please, in an orderly fashion, leave the exit door, which is on my left here. The main exit is right towards my left side. The restrooms, again, when you exit, they are on my right here. ACK is a smoke-free building, so no smoking is allowed inside the building. Let's respect that. And most importantly, to make this learning informative and engaging, let's all participate. Clear? Yeah. What is our session objective? I'm here to explain to you about the exposure triangle of photography, and most specifically, how it relates to smartphones. And learning this, how you can take your photography to the next level. Because what happens today in this world, almost everyone has smartphones. I'm sure all of you all have a smartphone here. And we take thousands and thousands of pictures. 90% of the time, these pictures turn out amazing. Because it is a smartphone. It knows what to do. But there are some times, 10 times, 10%, you wonder, why is this picture not coming? Why is it blurry? Why is it dark? And you don't know. So when you don't know, it's better if you had that knowledge, you could make that few pictures that are not coming good better. Wouldn't that be a good thing to do? Sure. So that's what we are here to understand. I want you all to first, this group, just take a normal picture with your normal camera, one picture of me, the three of you all. And this group, can you all take one picture? Can you all decide among yourself which is the best picture? And about among yourself, who has taken the best picture? Vote yourself and say, this is mine is best. Yes. You all agree? Yes. Turn it around so that others can see. Wow. I do look handsome. You agree that is the best? Yes. Why? 
Why is the others not the best? Why all are not the best? It could be the settings, it could be the quality of your camera, it could be the quality of the software itself. Because today, the software makes a lot of difference. The smartphones are becoming smarter. The light could be, again. So we are here to worry about the technical part of it. What are the three things that impact your photography? There are only three parameters. A camera to capture a correct picture needs an aperture. I'll explain what that is. It needs a shutter speed and it needs an ISO, especially an electronic camera. Now, the aperture is the lens itself, whether you can make it big or small. Smartphones don't have this ability. Smartphones, the aperture is fixed. So today, our job is even simpler. We only need to know two things, shutter and ISO, because the aperture is fixed for your camera. Have a look at this picture. What do you think, Najwa? These pictures, four pictures are taken at four different shutter speeds. Which one is the best, according to you? The first one. And why is the last picture not the best? Movement. There is too much movement. And the reason is because of the shutter speed in which these four pictures were captured. The first picture was taken at 500th of a second. Do you know what is 500th of a second? It's so fast. Right? You have no chance to do anything but to capture that movement. The last picture was taken at 1/15th of a second. Which means when you take a picture at that point, you would have moved. So what is the conclusion we can draw regarding shutter speed? If it is a fast shutter speed, you can freeze the movement. If it's a slow shutter speed, it's not, it will create blur. But does it mean that all the time we can never use slow shutter speed? When could we use slow shutter speed, for example? When there is no movement. For example, if I was taking a still life picture of food, which doesn't move, hopefully. <laughs> or something like that, uh, architecture, I want to take a picture, I could use a slow shutter speed because I know there is no movement in that. That's the understanding you have to have when you are using high shutter speed or low shutter speed. Sensitivity, ISO. ISO stands for International Services Organization. It's a body that certifies all kinds of business processes or technical specifications. And in photography, what ISO stands for is how much you are amplifying or magnifying the signal that is already captured. In electronics, what do we do if we have a weak signal? We amplify it. Similarly, in a camera, when you capture a picture and it's not dark enough, uh, bright enough, you could amplify the signal to make it brighter. But there is a cost for amplification, and that cost is it becomes noisy. It becomes uh, it doesn't become blurry, but it becomes noisy. So your photographs on a smartphone is a trade-off between shutter speed and ISO. That's like a resolution, this one? Yes. It's not a resolution. As you can see, when I shoot it at 100, it looks nice and clean. But here I am amplifying the signal, trying to make it brighter. When I do that, it becomes a little noisy, more noisy and more noisy, till it becomes almost unusable. But it can be done. ISO is normally increased when the light is not very bright when you're shooting photographs in a dark environment. The only way you can do is increase the ISO. Now your smartphone normally does this automatically. It knows because it calculates. But sometimes it makes mistakes. And here we are going to learn how we can control it ourselves. I had asked some of you all to download these apps for your Apple. You have an app called RAW Plus, and for Android, we have an app called 
manual camera. Can you all open that app, please? And for this is the button to control your ISO, and for you, you will see on your left hand side the shutter speed, and on the right hand side, you will see the uh, this is your ISO, this is your shutter speed. What I want you all to do is just do a small exercise in groups. For example, two of you, one of you all take the picture, but the other person just move your hand like this. Not so close, a little far away. And I want you all to determine at what ISO or what shutter speed would be required to freeze that movement. Okay? Try different shutter speeds. For Android, you can control the shutter speed from here. And for iOS, you can control the shutter speed from here. Take the picture and then tell me at what shutter speed. Yes. It should appear sharp. One over two hundred and fifty. That is actually a, more or less a very fast shutter speed. Okay. No, it's good because that way you can freeze, and we can see here. She has taken a picture at hundred and two fiftieth of a second, and with that, you don't see the movement. If you try to take a picture at a lower shutter speed, you will find that there is a blur. There is a shaking. You could see it clearly. Maybe he was not moving his hand so much. Yes, it will shake because it's a slower shutter speed. So you see the relationship now. If you try to shoot at a very high shutter speed, you will get the freezing. But if you try to lower the shutter speed, you will. Now, he said that 250th of a second is a good shutter speed to freeze movement. But what happens if I switch off the light? Uh, Rafa, can you switch off the lights? Yeah. If you try to take a picture now at 250th of a second, is it possible? No, I cannot see. Try increasing the ISO as much as you can. ISO? Yes. Increase as much as you can, 16,000, 12,000, whatever your camera has, increase it. No, 3,000. That's your maximum. Yeah, 40,000. Interesting. That was a very interesting exercise. Can you put on the lights? What did we understand with this exercise? First of all, if there is no light, the only way we can achieve a photograph is? Yes, and that's why we need sometimes ISO because if you are in a situation like darkness and you have a very good movement to capture, the only way you can do it is use the ISO because that's the way you will get it. And that's why most of the pictures, when you take them in a the dark environment using your normal camera, it will not come properly because the camera will not push the ISO enough. But if you use apps like this, you can control the ISO yourself. Does it make sense? So it's always a trade-off between ISO and shutter speed and what you need to capture. Because let's say in the same environment, I wanted to take a picture, but I was not interested in the movement. I, I didn't want to take at a high shutter speed. What I could do, I could lower the shutter speed because then I don't want to increase the ISO. Because when you increase the ISO, what happens? It becomes noisy. So I don't want noisy. 
So the only way I can do it is by reducing the shutter speed and taking the picture. But then, if there is movement, it will become blurred. If there is no movement, I can do it. So always it's a trade-off, what you can do and what you cannot do. Kaji, when the photographers take the picture of the cars in the road, they slow the shutter speed? Take they, the rally cars and so forth? No, 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 the cars in the street itself, like, no, like no, above no. The, the bridge. Yeah, they set the slow, they slow, they set the speed. The, the, the blurred, uh, colored, yes. The, yes, you have seen in the night photographs, you will see like a streak of light. That is because it is taken with a very low shutter speed. Maybe it has taken even one second or even two seconds. It's open and then it just becomes like a blur. If you want to take such photos, what you do, take your smartphone, Put it on a tripod like that. You get the tripod uh, half KD, one KD thing. Put it on. Change the shutter speed to one second or two seconds. Go in the night. Go to the Kuwait Towers. Try to take a picture of the lights. You will be easy able to do it if you use these rules. And understand what you need to balance. Should I take high, high shutter speed, low shutter speed, and so forth? This is clear? Very clear, very nice. I have a simple quiz here. On the left hand side, I have four parameters high shutter speed, high ISO, low shutter speed, low ISO. Can someone come here and do the matching? Right. Just draw the lines. High shutter speed will? You can help him. Fantastic. High ISO. Do you agree with that? High ISO. Correct. Noisy image is the correct answer. High ISO, when you increase the ISO, it becomes very noisy. The last one, it was shown, 2D. Low shutter speed? Low was low shutter speed, it would be blurry. Blurry, fantastic. And E, 4 is E. Thank you so much. Thank you, Vaal. So in summary, we have three parameters in photography, aperture, shutter speed, ISO. If you attend my professional courses with these cameras, you will learn the combination of all three, how they impact photography. But in smartphones, we have only two, ISO and shutter speed. Shutter speed defines the sharpness or blur in the photograph. ISO determines if image will be clear or noisy. Which means, if you master these two and understand them, and understand how your camera takes the pictures, you will master your smartphone camera. Are you ready to master your smartphone camera? Yes. Thank you very much.